Hello, I am going to be working with this bow tie. Uh, I have shown, you know, uh, working with these bow ties before. I'm doing a project that's super secret, should be done by the end of the month, but uh, I have to, had to, thanks to client uh, requests, make a new bow tie. This bow tie I tried to make as smooth as possible, but this one is actually going to be wrapped in fabric so I don't need to make this terribly smooth it's not that important so I'm actually going to just cast it as is uh, for casting purposes I'm going to make a two-part mold there is a collar that is sticking out the back with uh, an LED holder this will be an illuminated bow tie cast in silicon so it's pretty important it uh, is lit up. The LED holder is going to be the rigid part and it's going to help the wings of the bow tie stay rigid. It looks like this. The LEDs fit like this on either side pointing out and that's how that goes. So to make a two-part mold you need clay I have just some standard sculpting clay. Sort of like, I mean, it feels like Play-Doh, so I don't think it's anything fancy. But what you want to do is you want to mold around half of your item. So vertically uh, have it wrap half of it. And then... I will be making a box to contain it to pour the mold or sorry the silicon into uh, I, I'm able to do this just sort of roughly to start but eventually I will be making this as smooth as I possibly can so that the mold itself is really good but for the meantime I can just get a basic uh, fill going on I'm probably going to speed this up, so. These are standard sculpting tools. Um, so what I'm going to do is just smooth this out. I want it to cover the half. So Had a bit of a mishap with the camera, fell over, so there's a slight cut there as I reposition my camera. I'm keeping going with the smoothing. I'm going to get a little bit wider so this can be a bit more. I'm just going to use my finger and run it across. Okay, that's pretty good. So, 
now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this so that I can build a box around it. I need all these edges nice and smooth and I can use um, this spade tool, sculpting spade tool. So if I just come across, I don't want to have a ton of excess on this mold. So So I think that's going to be okay. I have some foam core that I had used for another mold. So I, I'm going to see if, you know, can I rescue it? Will this work? So I can use this piece and this piece. This can be here. And what I'm going to do, maybe I'll just turn this a little bit. I'll do this side first. What I'll do is I'll get this into position and uh, hold on, I'm going to get my hot glue gun. I've adjusted the camera to uh, provide a little bit more of a higher vantage point. Uh, so we'll see if that solves some of our problems in visibility. But I have my glue gun now heating up. And we're going to see, oh, there we go. We'll see if we can't uh, get this sorted out. So I'm just going to glue a nice bead on the outer edge here just to get it into position. And then we'll take this piece. Get that nice and tight here. I mean, I'm I'll be moving the uh, I'll move the the bow tie over to crush it up against the corner here. But you know, right now let's just get our beads in. Be careful you don't burn yourself. Hot glue is hot, as it turns out. So that's two sides. Just make sure this is nice and tight up against it. Third side. And then a bead. There we go. So if you're ever wondering how you can have your glue gun stop um, sliding around, drop some glue on your, dabs of glue on your stand, and then it, it's sticky, or it, it's, you know, less slidey. Uh, okay, so I have one more piece of foam core that I need to cut down. Piece. There we go. Take my stand off just to do this finicky bit. Sorry for interrupting your view there. buy your glue sticks in bulk because you never know when you're going to need more. There we 
go. All right. So that's pretty good. Nice solid everything. Now, the last time I did this, I actually um, glued the interior of the box because I didn't want it to leak anywhere. So I'm going to do that again because I think it was a good idea. registration marks in this so what uh, I don't have a ton of extra space but I, I do want to be able to put it into position and know that it's got a good fit and it's exactly where it needs to be so what I used last time which I got a good result with is a uh, paintbrush so the end of the paintbrush is round and I can just pop in holes So that should provide a nice, a nice uh, bond. Allow allow the thing to bond a little bit. Now, the guy at the store had sort of said, you know, don't worry too too much about mold release because silicon won't stick to this stuff, and use it only when you're you really only need to use it when you're um, uh, matching silicon to silicon if you want the silicon not to stick to itself. So. Um, that's probably true, but I'm just going to give it a quick spray of the mold release just to be, you know, safe side kind of guy. I'm just going to get this squished right up against the sides because it looks like it kind of pulled away a little bit, which is not optimal, but you know, whatever. That little ball of... This is where I'm going to wreck it because I, because I can't let something go. This little ball of hot glue is in the way, and I don't like it. So you wonder how do you get that little ball of hot glue? I'm going to try with wire cutters and just snip it, just so it's not in the box. <gasps> oh, almost. Yeah, buddy. Little ball of hot glue gone. That's what's important. It's not important. I don't know. Anyways, whatever. So I am going to give this a little spritz. What I want to do now is calculate um, how much to pour in. The easy way to do it is calculate the volume. Smooth on actually has a calculators. Now, I'll, 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 the link is probably down here. I have, I'm using Dragon Skin 10 NV, which I don't really know what NV stands for, but I'll find out. Mold box is, actually, I can do this easier because the length. Eighty-four by forty-two by what? I'm gonna try to give it a bit of height. Don't want it to be too small. So we're gonna say twenty-five millimeters high. This says three ounces, three fluid ounces. So I'm gonna flip this around because I want to work on this other end right now I just flip this around it's sitting on a nice big piece of scrap plywood I had sitting around so there we go this stuff smooth on dragon skin 10 NV silicon rubber it mixes very well together it is a uh, for my molds and my the, the end product. So these are one, it's one to one ratio. If I want three fluid ounces, that means each 
is going to have one and a half ounces of material. I'm going to shove on some, uh, this is actually super close. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna see if I can't get a, a higher vantage point. It's important to use, you know, gloves when handling this stuff because it's not good for you. So there are markings on these cups. These You buy these cups to go with you. Ba -ba -ba. This one and a half, man, that feels really big. It feels like it's gonna be a really big, I'm gonna go less, I think because just based off my experience already, I'm gonna go three quarters to see what happens because man, um, yeah, I'm gonna mark these cups so that if I have to make more, ah, fuck. if I have to make more, blue, Yellow. Oops. Oh, that doesn't want. Well, blue is green. That'll do. Anyways, like I was saying, if I have to make more, I want to make sure that I'm using the same cups. You do not want to stick the stick from one into the other. Hold on now. Yeah, I'm going to go three quarters because that... So stir well before using. I got. Nah. Look at that. All right, there's my three quarters. That's that. And probably I should make note of which stick was also the blue. So that stick is the blue stick. Now I have residue on my fingers. I'm gonna to try to make sure I don't touch the inside of this, I don't know how much that would affect it, but you know, stir, 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 stir. I'm actually gonna. I think I have a sharpie. Uh, couldn't find my sharpie. Whoops. But uh, I did find a little pen, so. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. So, I think this is going to be enough. I don't think I'm going to need more. But, you know, just keep this stuff handy just in case. And I'm going to use a different stir stick and a whole new cup. Smooth on cup. And... We'll just empty the cup. Now, if you were trying to do a perfect cast, perfect mold, you would use a vacuum degasser, which essentially pulls all of the air out of your liquid, out of your mix, so that you have zero bubbles. I don't have one of those. This is pretty good. So, 
what I do is I bounce it. And that does get a good amount. So the other thing that I used is this kid's toothbrush. It has a rotating head, and if I hold it against the container, it is vibrating enough, like it causes enough vibration that it actually makes the bubbles rise. So I don't know, maybe you can see that. So all I do is I just run it up. Now again, a vacuum degasser would be what you really want. But since I don't have one of those, electric toothbrush. Yeah, anyways, that's pretty good. Let's pour it in. Yeah, I think that was just enough. I don't think I need to mix any more. Um, I am going to try to get all of the mix out because what kind of goofball am I if I don't try that? And yeah, I found what I was doing was I was mixing this stuff, but like making way too much. So I'd, I'd end up like pouring it into a cup and making a little disc of silicon that I could use for nothing at all so this will just sit so you can kind of see i'm going to lower that lower the camera again so there's the mold i'm going to use the let me see if i can yeah this is a, this is working to release some of the bubbles which i you know because it's i've been able to make the decision because this is wrapped i won't need to have a perfectly smooth casting which is good because I don't actually have anything to allow me to do a perfectly smooth casting. But, oh man, I love seeing these bubbles come up. See those big bubbles right there? That's because of this for sure. So that's why I'm doing it, because I want to make sure I get any large pockets definitely out. The whole thing about making sure that the, the mold was tight against the box, or that the clay was tight against the box, is man this stuff is insidious and in how it can leach out wasting you know time that you really didn't think you had or that you know you didn't have um so it's it's super important to have a good tight seal that's why the glue the hot glue on the edges the hot glue on the seams okay I'm going to let that uh, set. Cure time is 75 minutes, it says. But I, the last time I did it, like I said, oh, 75 minutes, so I'll do that. And honestly, like it did not cure well enough. So I've been just leaving this for hours. Like <laughs> I'll come back after, you know, four hours or something. So I'm going to leave this as is, leave this to sit. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we'll do the demold later. Thanks. It has been probably about four hours since I poured this mold. Kids are home from school, so there's going to be some noise. 
But I'm ready to cut this thing out of its mold because, or out of, out of the box, because I, I think we're ready. So I'm just, I'm going to try to save this uh, foam core because <clears throat> I need to make the other half of the mold. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that I can save it. Oh. And we can just peel it off the bow tie. There we go. That's actually a really good casting. So, what's going to have to happen is that I clean off the clay. I put the bow tie back in, right, and then I'm going to rebuild my box after cleaning off all the clay from the, from the mold. You can see the nubs, right? Anyways, clean all the clay off. So we'll pause that and I'll get that all cleaned up and then I'll come back. A couple of things. I, you didn't need to see me build a second box. That wasn't important. Um, but one of the things that is important is the fact that this uh, LED holder will have this sticking out the back and it's going to be embedded inside of something so I need to have part of this rigid structure being able to force itself through and what I'd like to do is have a, a, you know a portion of the top of the back of the mold um, set up so that uh, this will have a small sleeve to hold it in place because once I put it in and then pour the uh, material into the mold this I want this to be well embedded and I want it to be held securely and also with the um, uh, sleeve holding it it means there won't be any air gaps so that you know the uh, material will leach out I'll also need to plug the hole here when I'm pouring so that it doesn't come out the end but you know that's what it is so that's the explanation for this little clay piece here. I'm going to work on uh, pouring the mold, which again you don't need to see, so I, I just wanted you to see this part because I thought it would be uh, interesting. The... Uh, okay. So... As we can see, I had a bit of a leak going on here. And it, this did work, but I'm I'm a little concerned. But we'll let's get this all taken apart and see what's up. That's a tough one there. All right, and there we go. Got my lovely little mold. Looks like it'll go back together well. This, the idea of course, is that this shoves through. This sits inside, and when you close it up, I guess I'm. Looking at 
I probably have to put like a small washer on that just to like keep it in place. I was hoping that this would be thin enough, but it looks like it's this tube of whatever was just a little too big, but man, okay, well, there you go. A little bit of cleanup, and I have my bow tie.